scheduled for the finance meeting. If everyone could rise for the pledge. Okay, we will start off with roll call. Tom Sequitz here. Travis Irons. Present. Ted Jermaine. Here. Don Javella. Here. Gary Stalboy. Here. David Saros. Here. Scott Charles. Here. Scott, uh, for the record, you of course have voting rights for the meeting. Uh, before we move into the rest of the agenda, um, I would like to entertain a motion to add an item to the agenda that was not originally on it. Uh, so under new business, uh, I would like to entertain a motion to add item E, uh, vacancy for a position on Board of Finance. So, okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries to add the item of vacancy for Board of Finance member. All right. Uh, next item is the acceptance of the minutes from the June 20th, 2018 regular meeting. Uh, every member has received, of course, the minutes in the last meeting. One comment I just wanted to make on those minutes was that it's not an edit or a change or anything, just a comment is um, we had discussed at the last meeting uh, inquiring to the Board of Education, uh, particularly Gary uh, had made um, some discussion regarding uh, monthly reporting, uh, regarding finances, as well as procurement policies as far as the Board of Finance uh, being able to get more information on that, and uh, I concur. Uh, so I did, in fact, about a week after our June 20th meeting, um, throw an email out to the superintendent, our chair of the Board of Ed, uh, and also the business manager of the Board of Education. I heard back from uh, the superintendent, and I have not gotten anything yet on that, but um, it is in the process of happening. So didn't have anything in time for this meeting. My goal is for the August meeting to have something in hand to distribute to everyone. Uh, hopefully regarding procurement policies and also what we can do for monthly statement. Hopefully that will be formatted. So, I'm trying to make that comment. Otherwise, uh, I believe uh, the way they are written is accurate. Any other members have comments or questions on the minutes? I move the Okay. Motion to accept the minutes. A second. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to accept the minutes. Accepted. All right, very good. Next, three, under new business, review the current fiscal year 2017-2018 budget statement. So uh, just a couple things I wanted to mention. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, Kelly, of course, our finance director, is not present tonight. She is away. Um, so there's a couple things I just wanted to mention kind of on her behalf because she would usually be here of course to do it uh, and if we have uh, any particular questions or something that Kelly would usually answer we will I will make note of them and obviously they'll be reflected in the minutes and uh, we will get more information on that but just a couple things uh, to consider uh, state revenue budget versus actual short uh, budget by one million eight hundred sixty thousand dollars four hundred sixty six uh, we will receive the balance of LOSIP once all checks are cleared, bridge project, and also the paving bid. Uh, the town will not get elderly tax relief from the state. I believe that was brought up in one of our past meetings, so we were aware of that. Uh, she just wanted to bring that up again. As far as local revenue, property tax revenue is 452000 more than budget. Numbers lower since we have been collecting back taxes. Under expenditures, we went out to bid for the back truck, and the bid price was 340000 uh, to 80,000 uh, from fiscal year 2018 budget, um, which will be used in the remaining amount of 260,000 will be used from fiscal year 2019 budget. Uh, no need to finance truck at this time. Also under expenditures, pool revenue, that's another thing I know we've brought up in the past, uh, so something to consider, pool revenue of 93,000, expenditures, however, 121,000. Highway Department uh, struggling at this time with utilities, uh, particularly the bus garage for the year. 
And prior to all the June invoices arriving, the town has been conservative in the about of 889,000 for the year as of July 12, 2018. So again, there's just a couple comments to consider. Otherwise, uh, hopefully everyone has had a chance to review. So any questions or comments on the budget statement this time? together with that attachment, but I actually did separate them because I wanted to do budget statement first, but we will be getting to that. Um, before we go to that, um, assuming there's nothing left on the current budget, fiscal year budget statement, I wanted to go to item B, which is to discuss and accept the post-issuance tax compliance procedures for tax exempt obligations as recommended by Bond Council. We discussed that at the last meeting. Uh, we wanted a little more time to, of course, review and also get further information on it. Uh, I know I talked to Kelly a little bit about it afterwards. Um, I personally do not have any questions on it. It's a recommended uh, best practice by Bond Council. I think it makes sense to adopt it to have in writing what exactly the procedure is. So I've reviewed it personally. I think it's good for us to uh, any other discussion and accept, but obviously I open it to the rest of the board members for any questions or comments. I've talked to Kelly too on that, and it's something that we do already. Right. So, you know, it's just something to write. Right. You know, but, uh, that's it. Okay. Yep. I concur. I move that we uh, accept the uh, practice as uh, recommended by the law. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries to accept the post issuance tax compliance procedures for tax exempt obligations. Okay, now we will move on to uh, discuss and approve uh, line items transfer. Um, this has also uh, been reviewed for those who've been attending uh, the Board of Selectmen meetings. It's already been uh, reviewed and approved by the Board of Selectmen. So at this time, this is our time to review it. Everyone should have received a copy uh, with any questions on it or comments. Uh, this patch is on mechanics. That seems like a considerable increase. Is that all the time? Well, um, the other thing is, I know we got a letter from the chief. I don't know if you saw that, Ted. Did you oh. see that? The attachment. Yeah. Ted, talk about it. Ten thousand dollars overtime to the dispatch mechanic. Mm -hmm. That's what Ted's question. What is it? Ted, not why? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why, why so, did it happen? Yeah, beyond what it says there, I'm not sure. Kathy, uh, you would have to speak with the chief. She got it now. All right. Maybe we should have the chief at the next meeting to answer that. Uniform to put it into the holiday. 
broken into three different ways to cover that three different ways. Cover the holiday thing. It's taken up from three lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's another question. How do we have access in uniforms? Again, we want to speak with the chief. So uh, in an effort to try to be um, uh, fiscally conservative and to save, I believe, around $16,000 uh, for the town, uh, recently uh, letters went out um, from the town to the chiefs of our four departments uh, to uh, basically take on the obligation of uh, doing the snow plowing service, which would be about $4,000 uh, per department. Um, so those letters have already gone out to the chiefs of each department. Uh, and they've all received them, acknowledged, and I know at this time, um, Kathy has been meeting and in contact uh, with uh, some of the chiefs at least, um, so I wanted to make sure everyone knew about that because that was not something that, going back to our meeting minutes, like during the budget season, we didn't discuss that 
particular uh, one that, that was going to be coming down the pike. So uh, it did come up, however, in past times. I know um, it was brought up to my attention that uh, our former first selectman had brought it up, I guess, uh, on a number of occasions that that was possibly something to consider. Uh, Kathy has also brought it up uh, and has been considering it. Uh, it's just I wanted to make sure that the Board of Finance was aware of it. And also, um, if there's anything that I might have missed, uh, Kathy, if there's anything you'd like to add, so at this time, what I did is I have met with two fire district chairmen, and I have spoke with the chief of the Plainfield through email, and at this time, we've retracted the invoice. Um, I believe their concerns are valid concerns, and through one of the departments, actually, they used to handle their own plowing. So, their concern was not how paying for their plowing, it was the timing of the invoice and how much it was. Um, so at this time, I have retracted. I'm setting up a meeting with the chiefs and the chairman of each fire district. We're gonna discuss it and see where we can go from here because I do feel like that it is fair that they pay a portion, um, meaning that the, the figure that was figured for them to pay may be too high. So again, I am um, setting up a meeting with the chiefs, the chairman of the fire districts, and then we're getting um, estimates what it would cost to do each fire station. Because in the past, how that was handled is the town did it, but then they contracted it out. So um, now every year we're paying the contractor to do it. And not just the fire station. Years ago, the uh, sewer department did it. Yes. Is that an option that might put this up? So, from my understanding, and I was not in office then, but in doing some research on it, my understanding was the sewer department did handle it, but it was, they got too busy and they were not able to handle it anymore. And that's when the contractor was brought in to handle it. I don't mind. I don't mind having our town trucks when you go to fire station and they're on the road and you know and what if they're on the road when you go to fire station they'll speak to a parking lot uh, but they all have their own taxes and you know or they have their budget they do the same thing we do they, they set their little rates and everything like that they think we do and they have their own budgets uh, I would think that's something that they and that was part of the concern why, because I listened to town residents and that was part of their concern, Don. And I do believe that, you know, they should have to pay a portion. I just think that, um, I, mean, I, don't mind, I don't mind our trucks bringing food there when they're going by. Right. They did need totally. But otherwise, they should pay a deep fee fire Because every one has got a different building. Correct. And each district also, though, has a different tax base. Uh -huh. So Plainfield right. and Musa are much bigger than Central Village right. and Oregon. So one of the concerns they, is why should they all share the same cost? Uh -huh. So right. that's why I said at this point I retracted it because I do believe that there needs to be more research done. My concern was that, again, it's getting late into the season and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't too late. But I, I, when I make a mistake, I make a mistake. Your budgets were all already made and I know how difficult it is for us when our budgets are made to go back and try and fund money. So I'm not saying that there will not be a fee for the fire districts. It's just we need to re-look at it and renegotiate. But, I'm saying we don't have the fire district I'm chief. saying necessarily we don't have to be when our highway crews are going to be following. Hey, wait a minute, that, that's been following a little bit. I'll take the controls. And that was one of my first thoughts, Don, is going back to the town. But yeah. one of the, th the things with the town... Not necessarily following the whole nine yards off, but the number that, you know, to get them here. Yeah. ...is taking them off the roads. And for me, I was able to do the first snowstorm this year. I was out in one of the trucks, so I know what their paths are. I know the time. I know the amount of people they have. Right. Staff is limited. We try to keep down, you know, the number of men we have on our crew. Right. So I would never want to 
pull them off the road. Either way, it's a safety issue because your fire departments have to be open. Right, I want the fire department open. open. And that's just okay. it. I don't want to count right, on. I don't think a whole lot of, you know, a couple of minutes. So there's just no so research that needs to be done right. on it. Thank you, Jeff. the sidewalks at the uh, fire department. The entryways and stuff, the snow balls don't get that. Do we still do that? When I went to the town, I used to send the guys out to do that. They had, uh, what do you call it, snow blowers or shovels, whatever. And they would blow the fire districts, open up all the doorways and the sidewalks. Is that something we still do? I would have to check, Ted. I do know that they're open, so I'm going to say it's the responsibility of the town. Um, to handle that but again that's part of the whole research is really looking to see what the town does and what's contracted out and also uh, the four fire districts and all fire departments have to do the system how many of them have bigger purpose no problem that you know, is true they, they volunteer to that is true Don but I would never want to put that burden on them because they all work Right. Okay. So, yeah, I heard it. You might sometimes get a little bump there, you know, with the whole fighting property you get, you know, you know, somebody come here for a few minutes and do this or somebody do that type of thing. I don't, I don't know. I would not, I would not feel comfortable putting the burden on the members of the fire department. I'm thankful that we have them right. when we need them. And I just think that as the town, I feel like it's part of our responsibility, Don because the fire departments are there to keep us safe. Right. Like I said, I don't mind how high we put it on the Take a couple of weeks. Okay. And you like the right track. I think that's the way it should be. Thank you. Yeah. I don't agree with that. They're a volunteer organization. Yep. Safety for the town. And we're going to turn around and charge each fire department $4,000. Wait a minute. Now we're collecting taxes to run the fire. Oh, but that goes to the fire Right, because they have equipment to also maintain. Right. So what? Why would you charge the fire department who's going to put out a fire in the town? And that all volunteers. Every well, single one of them. No, no, no. Well, no. you have to go back on that, Scott, because they do get paid. And they do get, they have to qualify, and they get paid for how many, um, how many, how many of those were the, that's right, it. and they do all kinds of drills, they spend extra yeah. time, I, I would, I, I'll tell you right now, I would not have voted yes to move the budget forward if you would come out in advance and said we were going to charge the fire department $16,000, my vote would have been no, to do it now after the fact is a backdoor vote, and it's well, not right, uh, absolutely not right. Uh, I would have never said yes. I would have I absolutely would have voted no until the sixteen thousand dollars was taken off the table. Well, they have their own. They have their own finance department. I know. Uh, I, mean, right, right, I know. Right, I right, pay fire right, taxes. Right, I know. Right, right, I pay fire taxes, and my right. taxes increased, and now we're going to turn around okay. and charge the fire department sixteen thousand dollars. Okay, Travis. I didn't move. Okay, I missed. I missed the meeting today at the end of June. Okay. Did Brain do have that yet? Is that the memory? Did it go over down? Okay. They just say, okay, guess what? Why didn't we keep our mill rate the same? We don't know because of evaluation. Okay, why did they why, why did they keep the mill rate the same then? I don't know. No, they should have done the same thing we did. They keep things in balance, yes or no. Well, see, again, that's your opinion. I still don't agree. I don't agree we did the right thing by raising the taxes. Why did we raise taxes? We raised taxes in the town. Not everybody. Yeah. We don't really know if it was a raise. 7%. 7%. Yeah. My taxes went up. I'm just saying, my point is, is we did a tax raise, and now we turn around and we want to pay but, but the fire department to pay But we lowered the mill rate. So the tax rate won't be as much. Okay, I got a okay. tax bill. So we try to we it's try to come up with a number where the people who moved uh, values went down, you know, try to balance that out. The point is, if this was brought up, my vote would have been done. Okay. Bring it up after the fact is wrong. 
Why do we need the extra $16,000 besides being fiscally conservative? Why do we need an extra $16,000 all of a sudden? Well, it was discussed last year, Scott. And I know. Yeah. I'm sure he's the one who brought it up at the end of the year with Paul. I know. I watched the video. It doesn't, it still should have been discussed during, during the budget season if we were going to do it. Would have changed my stance totally. I don't think we need the extra money to do that. I think they can find a way to get there. Yeah. Just saying. Does the board finance have the authority to stop it? Well, Sheriff said she retracted it. I mean, so at this point, it's retracted. Have the departments looked into individually going out and getting contracts? A couple have looked into it. And, and how does that tie into the four grand? Is it three grand? Five grand. I mean, those are, those are things because they did individual contracts, and all of a sudden, you know, everybody's paying two grand for the year for the flat rate to be there on call. You know, they're always going to be there. Plus, then each snowstorm they charge by the inch. They got, you know, their rules. I, I don't know a lot about it. I just know those things. And that's part of the reason why I said um, I asked to meet with the fire chiefs, the chairmen, um, because those are the things that we can discuss and come up with a figure that fits them, fits the town, if, if that's the rule we choose. And the sidewalks that we're talking about and doorways clearing, that probably is done by the snow plow contracting people at this point. I'm going to assume, I don't know. Only because when you bid it out, if that's what they're doing presently, a comparable bid would include those things. And I have set up a, a meeting with a contractor okay. that we use also. Um, just uh, again, my thought is uh, I do um, appreciate the fact that you retracted and reconsidered, uh, and more research needs to go in, as you mentioned. I, I do agree with that, especially because we're after our budget season right now, and as you said, it is very tough uh, once we have budgets, not just for the town, but obviously for the fire department. I know I went to, because I'm in Plainfield Fire District, I went to the fire uh, district's annual meeting and reviewed the budget and saw it get approved. But, uh, I'm sure if this has been something that had been discussed and brought up or if this had been done earlier on, that probably would have come up in the fire district's annual meeting for discussion. Uh, and I think it's, again, definitely needs to be uh, more research done, and I appreciate the fact that you're considering that. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, any other discussion on that? No? Okay. Moving on to item E, what I had added there uh, through the motion on the agenda, which is vacancy for Board of Finance. So for anyone who might not have heard, uh, effective as of Monday, uh, the 16th of July, uh, Joe Bissett, who was a full member, Democrat on Board of Finance, has officially resigned, uh, which makes his position uh, vacant. So the way it works, as has been done in the past, is the Board of Finance has 30 days effective from the date of the resignation to fill that vacancy, which again has to be filled by a Democrat, nobody else. Uh, and if we fail to fill that vacancy within the 30 day time frame, then the responsibility goes to the Board of Selectmen uh, to fill that vacancy. Um, so that's what I was referring to earlier when I said we are going to need to have a special meeting. And so we actually have two items now that we're going to have a special meeting for. One is to try to move the uh, line items transfer earlier and to get the chief out to answer questions, but to also the goal being to fill that vacancy within that time frame before our next regular meeting. Yes, and at this time, I don't. I also talked to Luisa Trakas. I have not heard of anybody who has thus far turned in any letters of interest. Um, the only thing I ask there is just please, if there is anybody who is a Democrat who is looking to express interest here, make sure you get them to do an official letter to the town clerk to make it official. Um, I would also appreciate um, some type of communication, a phone call, uh, just letting us know so that way I can keep track of how many. Yeah. Always uh, I personally did not. I was gonna. I did reach out to him, but I did not hear back from him. Back from him. Uh, do we have to accept that resignation? Um, no. I don't think. So. I don't think so. Just as a matter of housekeeping. Discussion, but is it appropriate to move um, Scott to a full member so that when we we're accurately advertising what it is we're looking to fill on board, uh, uh, an alternate seat? 
because as it stands right now, if you went one for one, we would fill in ghosts. We have an alternate, a very capable alternate that can slide into a full seat now. I just have to ask if you have an interest. <laughs> <laughs> I already told Tom. Maybe I'm going to make it stop. Go to Second, to elevate Scott to the full member position and then advertise to fill the vacancy of the alternate position. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries to elevate Scott to full member position of Board of Finance and advertise for the vacant position. So, Scott, congratulations. Is that until the next election? Is that how that works? Yes, yeah, that's what I just, just yeah. to fill. Right, which is next year, next November. Now you have to go to Tom's work. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, right, you, you understand that we got to resign and then do that with her. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and that was our last item under new business. It was added, so number four. Citizens' participation. Yes. Theo B. Smith, Winfield. I just want to say I'm glad that Kathy retracted also. Um, I don't think it's fair to put this on fire departments. I think it's going to end up coming back onto the residents and the mill increase. And even though the board, yes, and everyone worked hard to get the mill down, there's still a lot of residents out there that covered the cost this year in their taxes that they're struggling to pay. So now on top of that, even though the 16 has been allotted into the budget, if we were to go forward with this, even like next year, we're going to be, I mean, how are the fire departments going to recoup? How are they going to come up with that money? They're going to have to put that on the residents as, as an additional tax. They're going to have to raise their amount. And a lot of us are already struggling. So I just, I, I don't understand that. And then if certain towns are smaller, certain villages, excuse me, are smaller than the others, are these some of the more like worry? I mean, I'm sure that they are economically struggling, let's say worse than certain areas of Plainfield. So I just, I, I don't think it's a good idea. And my understanding is, is that we subcontract, we bid out for this, correct? Yes. So is it possible to find, to put this out for bid and see if we can get someone to come in at a lower cost? Well, we always go by the lowest bid that comes in. Because I mean, like, I know K&H won the bid last year, and I know that they also got a bid to do the project over at the elementary school, and they came in substantially cheaper than what was line item last year. We have another $50,000 project in the capital improvement for the school this year. I mean, I, I, just, I just don't see where it's reasonable to put this on our fire stations because it's going to fall on the volunteer firemen and it's going to fall back onto the residents. Either way, the residents are going to be paying for this, whether it's in the line item and the mill increases next year in our taxes or whether it's in our fire taxes. I mean, ultimately, I see where the town has, you know, the administration part has the budget and then the fire department does their separate, but ultimately it's still the residents that are covering the costs. Well, this was brought forward to only because of concerns from the residents. So that's why it ever, since I've been here, that's the reason why we're here. Because of concerns. Residents are asking for yes, that fire of their stations? fire tax, but they don't understand why they pay fire tax with their for and property tax and so you have to address everybody but they have to repair those trucks they have to keep the equipment up I mean if you talk to some of the firemen and I'm sure Travis aren't you on the fire department or a volunteer tonight I am a member of the board of fire okay so <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the fire chief of Plainfield it's like, okay, if you have to do equipment on the truck, because this was told to me, and I just want to verify this. If, let's say, there's a bad baron on a the truck, they don't just get to replace that 
have one bad marriage, they might the state might say you have to replace all of them. So I mean, there's a lot of fees involved. There's a lot of costs involved with the equipment and the upkeep and the uniforms and there is, but each fire district also has a, a budget, just like the town does. But they're supported by the state. And if you have a bad tire on your car, it has a nick on it. Do you go buy four new tires? No, you buy the one new tire. The state says put them all on you, on that truck. If you have a bad hose on that truck, they are. You buy new hoses. And that's probably a lot of the reason that why the fire taxes go the way they do. Yes. And I heard this right from the fire. He said you wouldn't believe it. But it's true. <coughs> so if you don't have to repair the horses this year, well, maybe you could lower your fire taxes, couldn't you? But if the state says I want new hoses on this truck, Somebody got paid for them. Where the tax pass? Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah. Bill Knight, 83 Hershey. What's up? Congratulations, Scott. Thank you. Uh, being appointed full time member. My, my first thing is, is that you didn't have to motion that on his new business to put him on as a full time member and then do the alternate and fill the position. That's all. I got a question. That's all for that. Wouldn't it be considered a new business to pull to pull him off of alternate to put him into the full time full term? I'm good. It's just a question I'm yeah, asking. Yeah, yeah. No, I, as far as uh, I know, I think we did correct procedure as far as nope. No. If, if you feel it's correct, I'm just I'm just yeah. asking. Yeah. What I can do is I can confirm with the town clerk because anytime I would to be on the yeah. safe side. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. No matter what, it's it's a good deal. Yep. Yeah. The second thing is the fire departments. Kathy, I applaud you. Um, you did the right thing. Um, the thing is, you got to discuss the matter with the chiefs, the chairman, find out where each district is, what they're paying out, and where they're at, and take it from there instead of just taking the 16 grand and pulling it from. And that's what. And that's the way to go about it. Discuss it with them instead of putting the hammer down, trying to take 16 grand for something that you need and discuss it with them and move it forward. And I mean, that that, why that's the smart right. thing to do and yeah. you did the right thing. You really did. And then take it to the Board of Finance and see where they're at and then put the contracts or whatever you got to do, put it off. So that was a good move on your part. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. Let's change yourself. How many air conditioners are in this building? <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Because it's been this racing. D99, maybe? <laughs> How many hours is it going to go back and go into an air conditioner or not? After we leave this room. Maybe we should meet at the senior center. There you go. Let's just start next time. Yeah. Well, there's 11 air conditioner units in this building. Four of them. Uh, not window units. Okay? That's almost enough to call this building. Or well, this auditorium, whatever you want to call it. And seeing how dearly first selected bring bringing in much money this year, I don't see why we can't look into it. And if we need some, why can't we go in the fund that come? Now this is going it's to on our, It's on our list, Jack. Uh, Ah, why do you say that? To look into what we can do. Yeah. Because this auditorium is rented out right. for events and for meetings, and we can't rent it in the summertime because of the situation. You know, so. Now, I, I did the other thing you might think of is to keep the meeting short. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or public comments? Well, the only one that said we're going to be here for the next 20 years. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, seeing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So be it. All right, is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Very good. Thank you, everyone.